In the late 1990s and early 2000s, China's exports of clothing, furniture, household appliances, and other products flooded the European and American markets, significantly impacting Western low to mid end enterprises. Chinese exports, such as t shirts, jeans, and jackets, posed a significant threat to local consumer brands in Europe, resulting in the loss of 1 million jobs in the EU textile and clothing industry over the decade preceding 2005. Chinese panel furniture, fabric sofas, office furniture, and outdoor furniture reduced EU furniture manufacturing employment from 1 million to 670,000 before 2005. Chinese small household appliances and kitchen appliances captured market shares ranging from 25% to 40% in various European countries, forcing many small and medium sized enterprises there to shut down. Currently, China's focus on developing electric vehicles, lithium batteries, and solar panels, technologies with moderate entry barriers and immense market potential, has led to a surge in exports supported by subsidies from the Chinese government. These clean energy products are being weaponized for economic aggression against Western countries. According to data from the Chinese General Administration of Customs, exports reached 3.75 trillion yuan in the first two months of this year, a 10.3% increase year on year, significantly surpassing market expectations, largely due to the export performance of these three major items. In 2023, exports of the so called New Three electric vehicles, lithium batteries, and solar panels totaled 1.06 trillion yuan. In China, subsidies provided by various levels of government and institutions for these three major industries have exceeded that of the United States and the European Union combined. China exported 49.1 million vehicles last year, an increase of about 58% from the previous year, with one third being electric vehicles. Chinese made electric vehicles accounted for 3% of the market share in the United States, 80% of which were Tesla. In Europe, Chinese electric vehicles held an 11% market share, with 70% being European brands acquired by Chinese car makers. Their success in penetrating the European and American markets is attributed to their significantly lower average prices compared to European electric vehicles. For instance, BYD's Dolphin Mini electric car, sold in Mexico this year, is priced at only $21,000, less than half the price of Tesla's cheapest model, with a subsidy from the Chinese government amounting to nearly $20,000. Commentators argue that China's subsidy strategy is essentially an economic invasion of the free world. By dumping electric vehicles at low prices, Western car companies see a sharp decline in sales, eventually leading to bankruptcy. Subsequently, China opportunistically acquires these companies, aiming for global dominance in the automotive industry. Thus, China is weaponizing the industrial chain for geopolitical purposes. However, China's actions have prompted a coordinated backlash from the West. Chinese automakers face a total ban on the U.S. market. On March 5, 2023, the European Union announced the imposition of anti subsidy tariffs on electric cars from China, with the measure set to be applied retroactively. Industry experts predict this move may be a critical step towards a complete ban on Chinese electric vehicle imports to the EU. Simultaneously, the UK government is preparing to investigate the receipt of subsidies by Chinese electric car makers, and if confirmed, imports to the UK will also face heavy tariffs. The US stance is even more stringent, citing national security reasons to impose strict restrictions on Chinese electric cars. On February 29th, President Biden announced that all Chinese made cars must remove their internet connectivity features and undergo a national security review. This action aims to prevent these vehicles from potentially collecting and transmitting data to China or being remotely controlled, which poses a potential threat to U.S. national security. If the internet connectivity feature is indeed removed, selling these cars in the U.S. would become extremely challenging, even if Chinese car companies consider legal action, since the decision does not explicitly ban the sale of Chinese electric cars in the U.S., but rather adds additional compliance requirements, their chances of winning in court are low. Additionally, this may prompt American consumers who have purchased Chinese electric cars to file class action lawsuits against Chinese automakers. The policies recently introduced by the Biden administration undoubtedly deal a significant blow to Xi Jinping's expansion strategy for the Chinese electric vehicle companies. Facing the dual blockade in Europe and America, 
Chinese car companies such as BYD have already expanded production bases in countries like Vietnam, Indonesia, and Thailand, hoping to compensate by entering the Southeast Asian and Middle Eastern markets. However, the consumer purchasing power and financial maturity in these emerging markets are far below those of Europe and the United States, making it extremely challenging to promote and sell electric cars there. Lithium batteries are. Lithium batteries are the most critical components in electric vehicles. In addition to providing power, these batteries also incorporate positioning and monitoring chips. China believes that whoever dominates the lithium battery industry may have the potential to control the world. Although the development of six lithium battery companies, including contemporary Amprex Technology Company Limited (CATL) and BYD, China has captured 70% of the global market share. In 2023, its market share in the EU and the US reached 34% and 50%, respectively. The rapid development of China's lithium battery industry is not due to technological superiority. Firstly, the Chinese government has implemented large-scale financial subsidies for the lithium battery industry. Secondly, China's relatively lax enforcement of environmental standards has, to some extent, reduced production costs and accelerated project initiation and expansion. The key processes for producing lithium batteries involve refining and processing nickel and cobalt, which generate significant environmental pollution. Western countries typically enforce stricter environmental regulations, increasing production costs, and prolonging project initiation. Therefore, in the West, many lithium battery factories are assembly plants, while the refining and processing of core materials with heavier pollution are mostly done in China. It is estimated that establishing a battery factory in China costs only about 55 percent of what it would be in the U.S., enabling China to rapidly expand its share in the global lithium battery market. Additionally, from the extraction of raw materials to battery production and final application, China can provide a complete supply chain domestically, significantly reducing logistics and transaction costs. The rapid rise of China's lithium battery industry, while seemingly a result of technological and market expansion, owes to complex international strategic layouts and political considerations. In the global fight against climate change and calls for reduced fossil fuels, the Chinese government views the field of green energy as an arena where it can consolidate and expand its global influence. Of particular note is the industry giant CATL, which has received significant support from the Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping. Some analysts believe that when Xi Jinping was in politics in Fujian Province, he provided crucial support to the predecessor company of CATL. Currently, CATL holds approximately 37 percent of the global lithium battery market share, posing a formidable challenge to competitors in countries like the U.S. and Japan. Especially noteworthy is CATL's business in Xinjiang, which has come under strict scrutiny from the U.S. due to allegations of forced labor and violations of international rules. Consequently, U.S. regulatory agencies are watching CATL closely, and it is seen as the next Huawei. In July 2022, Ford announced plans to invest $3.5 billion in collaboration with CATL to establish a battery factory in Michigan, USA. However, on September 25th of the following year, Ford suddenly announced the suspension of the project, excluding CATL's involvement. Behind this decision was concern from Republican lawmakers about CATL's Chinese background. They argue that sensitive battery technology might pose a threat to U.S. national security. Ford's decision to halt the project may stem from concerns about potential U.S. sanctions. The application range of lithium batteries is extremely wide, not limited to the electric vehicle sector, but also extensively used in various military-sensitive devices such as drones, underwater torpedoes, underwater mines, and various types of intelligent underwater submersibles. According to the provisions of the 2024 U.S. National Defense Authorization Act, starting from October 2027, the U.S. Department of Defense will prohibit the purchase of batteries produced in China. Given China's approximately 70% share of the global lithium battery market, this ban by the U.S. Department of Defense indicates America's firm determination to decouple from China economically. This move makes it easier to ban other Chinese products from entering the U.S. 
This policy is expected to prompt American companies, including Tesla and Ford, to invest in domestic battery production facilities, effectively restraining China's expansion in the lithium battery industry and their weaponization of the supply chain. For China, this is undoubtedly a significant blow to its battery industry, and by extension, its economic prosperity doctrine. Solar energy in 2011, Chinese photovoltaic companies dumped solar panels on the European market at prices 30% to 50% lower than European companies. Many European photovoltaic companies went bankrupt and a large number of workers lost their jobs between 2011 and 2013. German company Qcells, once the world's largest solar panel manufacturer, also filed for bankruptcy in 2011. Today, European domestic solar companies hold only a 3% share of the European market, with Chinese companies dominating almost all other markets. Globally, 80% of solar panels come from Chinese factories. Why has China become a solar power? Because of Xinjiang. There is a large amount of quartz sand for manufacturing polysilicon, abundant coal resources, and rich solar energy resources with low energy costs not to mention the abundant cheap labor force there, including the Uyghurs in re-education camps. Therefore, nearly one-third of the world's polysilicon is produced in Xinjiang each year, at a cost two-thirds lower than European products. European ports and warehouses are filled with Chinese solar panels, with a staggering quantity ranging from 70 to 85 gigawatts. Meanwhile, the production capacity of European domestic manufacturers has dwindled to just 2 gigawatts last year. European technology is advancing, and China's cost advantage in solar panels may begin to waver. NextWave, a German startup, has developed a new process for silicon wafer production that reduces energy consumption by 70% and produces thinner wafers, an innovative technology that traditional Chinese processes may struggle to match. NextWave has begun mass production and partnered with European photovoltaic companies. Indian industrial giant Reliance has also joined, planning to jointly create a gigawatt-scale solar industry chain, using NextWave technology as a key component. This means that China's monopoly in the solar silicon wafer field will be shaken. On the other hand, although German company SolarWatt does not have a cost advantage, it has achieved success in niche markets by focusing on high-quality, environmentally friendly residential photovoltaic components. The company's order book continues to grow, albeit with extended delivery periods. However, SolarWatt CEO admitted that they still rely on imports from China due to insufficient silicon wafer production capacity in Europe. This problem is partly due to Germany's premature reduction of photovoltaic subsidies 10 years ago, leading to a sharp decline in industry investment. The EU has realized this and is now planning measures to once again support European solar component production. Why is it so cheap? The reason China can dump solar and electric cars on Europe at ridiculously low prices and at such large scale is that they have human minds. According to Reuters, the Chinese National Development and Reform Commission controls large projects in key industries such as chemicals, automobiles, nuclear power, and steel. These projects are scattered and subdivided into various provinces across the country, and some parts are even sent directly to Chinese prisons or to North Korea. According to statistics, China's prisons hold nearly 2 million prison laborers, while North Korea has over 20 million potential laborers. These two massive labor pools provide the CCP with virtually unlimited labor support. They can mobilize tens of thousands of people in just a matter of minutes. And the cost for these laborers is as low as a bowl of rice with a few pieces of pickled vegetables. This is the core competitiveness of the CCP, the reason why its products have such devastating impact on the international market. What's more, North Korea hardly considers environmental protection and environmental impact assessments when setting up factories, significantly reducing production costs. It is worth mentioning Xi Jinping's concept of a community of shared future for mankind. Simply put, it's about burdening countries along the Belt and Road Initiative with debt. When these countries go bankrupt, labor costs will become even lower and will be concentrated to produce cheap products. Ultimately, using the supply chain, the CCP aims to dominate the international market and crush Western products. As illustrated above, we observe a strategy characterized by intense competition evolved into a comprehensive national approach. 
This strategy transforms unrestrained conduct into an industry, posing a challenge to Western competitors who prioritize principles and ethical standards. Countries and companies that adhere to principles and moral bottom lines will inevitably increase costs. The CCP exploits this by using its so-called human minds advantage, endless labor resources, and stealing Western technology to gain an advantage in the global market. Chinese workers lack internationally recognized labor rights protections, such as freedom of association and collective bargaining rights. They are forced to join state-controlled unions, have no right to strike, and labor costs are artificially suppressed. This systemic exploitation gives Chinese products a cost advantage in the international market. When Western countries expose and criticize China's exploitation practices, they often face official denial and evasion from Beijing. This attitude, combined with the CCP's unfettered economic strategy, has gradually enabled Chinese products to gain an advantage in the global market. Its ultimate goal is to undercut and eventually destroy the economic foundation and political independence of Europe and the United States. Faced with this imminent threat, completely decoupling from the Chinese economy, although challenging for Western countries, is the ultimate choice to protect their own future. The U.S., Japan, and Europe seem to be preparing to close their market doors again, reminiscent of the Cold War era. The contradictions between the CCP and the West are deep-rooted and structural, almost impossible to reconcile through simple negotiations or compromises.